yoga can benefit your digestion and your overall health and elimination, for instance, which is very big in the yogic world as well as in the be green world. And of course, the diet is very important, but there's some things we're going to be doing during this chair yoga that can also help. Anytime you put pressure on your internal organs, it helps to keep things moving and alive. So you'll notice, I'll draw your attention to different parts of your body, and you'll notice the difference from the right side to the left side as we begin. So let me move back into my chair, and I would invite you to take your shoes off if you have shoes on. And I, hopefully you're dressed comfortably. I'm going to remove my shoes right now. And you can have your socks off or on, whatever is more comfortable. So the first part of the chair is to just sit up as straight as you can with your back nice and flat against the chair. Now I have a chair with arms. If you don't have one, that's okay. Um, but for today's demo, I'm going to use the with your palms inside of your knee at this moment and bring your attention to your breath. We're going to take three calming breaths. So try to breathe in deeply through your nose and exhale gently through your pursed lips. And on your last breath, let it help you even your posture come even straighter from the crown of your head. So now as you gently open your eyes, cross your right leg over your left and just simply place your clasped hands over your knee. This is how we always begin with a warm up. The yoga sessions usually have a warm up a middle, and then a cool down, and then lastly, a deep, deep relaxation, even though it may only be a minute or two. So take that right leg and hike it in the knee up as high as you can, placing your ankle near the other knee, and embrace that knee with your right arm. And if your left hand, if it's accessible to you to reach your foot, fine, or you can reach your ankle, but if you can reach your foot, you can grab your toes. And then I want that knee right in front of your sternum. So it's not off to the side. It's in the sternum. And that alone will help you to squeeze those inner organs. Now, sitting up nice and tall, extend your neck and your chin like maybe a turtle coming out of its shell. And then lean forward slowly and put your chin over the knee. Don't look down, squeeze, and don't forget to breathe. As you sit up, you can relax your grip and then place your leg in an L position, one hand on the knee, the other hand on your foot or ankle. You're sitting up nice and straight. Now gently take your right hand and press down on your knee. You're going to have an opening or maybe a slight discomfort in this right hip. If you have hip replacement, be even more gentle. But gently test out that side and keep steady pressure. You're opening up the ball joint of your hip and allowing the synovial fluid to come flowing in to lubricate your hip. And then you can release the leg, bring it down, kind of give it a shake out. Notice the difference in that right hip compared to your left hip. As you bring your left leg over, crossing the leg, sitting up nice and straight, bring the leg straight up, embrace it, bring it in alignment right over your sternum, 
reach for your foot or ankle, extend your chin and out over the knee. Breathe. Feel the pressure on your abdomen. Breathe. Slowly come back up. Then let's let this leg down slowly into it. You may notice one side may different, be different than the other. And there is no right or wrong. If your leg is here or if it's here, it doesn't matter. You still get the benefit for you. Every body is different. So we press down on this knee, maintaining that tall posture, feeling that opening of the left hip. Ooh. Then you can slowly release it and shake that leg out. Now we'll do one more motion for our hip. This is all part of our warm up before we do something further. So bring the right leg up again, and this time I want you to reach down and embrace it like a baby. It's called Rock the Baby. This is your baby. And you're going to just rock that hip back and forth. You can exaggerate it as much as you want, further, further. And then slowly release that little baby. Let's bring our other baby up. Embrace it. Put the left hand under it and rock that little baby slowly. Don't be concerned if I'm a little choppy. It's what you're doing that counts, not me. So release leg and down, and then readjust your posture so you're up nice and straight. Notice in your hips and your thighs, and maybe you even feel a little different squeezing of your abdomen. So then we're going to sweep our arms up above our heads. We're going to interlace our fingers and press them forward, and then them right up. Above your head, breathe, breathe. Now bring your clasped hands behind your head. Rest your head in your hands and lean back and look up. And slowly open your elbows, lifting your heart and your lungs up and pressing your elbows back. You're stretching this arm, armpit, and the sides of your muscles through your chest. Breathe those pectoral muscles. Very important. Keep them loose and not tight. And then Keep your hands clasped, come forward with your elbows, readjust your grip if you have to, but try to get your elbows towards your knees. Here you are compressing your inner organs as you come up. Release your hands, shake your fingers out, take another breath. Now, if you're in a chair with arms, great. If you're not, you don't need to have the arms. You can reach for the seat of the chair. So place both hands aside. Do not move your hips. Just simply turn your head and look over your left shoulder, holding on to the chair as tight as you can, and exploring the twist of your spine. Back a little further, you can pause, take a breath, use your eyes to bring yourself a little further back, and then slow forward. So those of you that are still driving, or maybe you're not driving, this is pretty important being able to look over. So hold on to that side of your chair, either the arm or the seat of the chair. It's important to keep your chin up so you're not down. And then turn and look over your right shoulder 
until you feel that gentle spinal twist in your lower back. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Go a little further. Breathe. And then slowly come forward. The yogis believed that spine was a secret to health and wellness. So anything you can do to put space between the vertebrae is very important. So let's raise our right arm and get the arm right next to the ear. Your left arm needs to hang down off the chair, completely loose. Then slowly start to move over to your left side, reaching with your right hand, not moving your legs or your hips, and letting this other arm just dangle near the floor, reaching, reaching, breathing, and then come up and do the other side bringing that arm up right next to the ear this arm is just hanging loose reaching 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 perhaps your fingers will get near the floor but if they don't it's okay if you're close to the floor try pausing and on the exhale you may find you might go down a little bit further and then come up slowly and then pause and take a break and breathe so we did a, quite a bit of spinal work there and our shoulders so kind of scoot forward in your chair a little bit so you're not on the back hands on your knees and let's bring our elbows up and we're going to roll, roll our, our shoulders in a backward motion. Just the shoulders, your hands on your shoulders, pause and forward. Keep it. Then you can release those hands, shake your hands out and your arms out. Lean back a little further in your chair. This time, raise your feet. I don't know if you can see my, my feet and your arms. And we're going to do what's called happy baby, but we're going to strengthen our abdomen here. There's my feet. So happy baby is just wiggle in those arms and wiggle in those legs and just let it all go. Ooh, when we do regular yoga, we're on the floor with our arms and legs up in the air and we're just wiggling, wiggling, wiggling. It's rating and stimulating. So that should have felt, felt good. So one of the things I mentioned to Amy is that Chair yoga is not, does not mean that you're sitting. So I want to make sure that I'm reaching out to those people who maybe have a little more mobility and to challenge yourself to use balance. We've done some great things in the chair, but I'd like to invite you to get out of the chair for a minute. The chair is just a prop that we're going to use. So I want you to slide forward to the top three quarters of your chair. Have your feet hip width apart and look straight ahead at me. And we're caught twice without standing up completely. So you can have like this and please come up a few inches off the chair and back down a few inches off the chair and back down. And then the next time you sit down at the table one, look them in the eye when you're about to get up and stand up if you can. 
if you have to use a chair, it's there for you. Now step to the right side of your chair so I can show you a few things that might help with your balance. It's still chair fault. The chair should be close to your hip. This chair happens to have a little swivel. I would never recommend that, but I wanted to use this one because it has arms. So place your left hand on arm, move your weight to your left leg, and simply raise your right leg. Place your hand on your right leg. Not so bad. You're testing out your feeling of stability and balance using the chair. Lift your right arm up next to your ear. This is a pose in yoga called the half dancer. You can move your leg behind you and you can extend your arm if you can feel comfortable doing that and then come back up. So kind of loosen your feet, your hips a little bit. Bring that leg back up. This time maybe move your hand to the top of the chair, the back of the chair, lifting the right arm up and just see if you can lift the other arm off for even for a minute or two and concentrate feel that chair against your hip it's there for you come back down i have a sense that everybody did really good at that so now i want you to walk behind the chair i'm going to simply turn mine sideways so you can see i'm walking in the chair and I want you to keep walking until you can bring your head between your arms, press your spine out behind you, and come to a nice flat back. And look down at the floor and just breathe and let your spine go for a minute. Press the base of your spine like an arrow away from you so it lengthens. And breathe. And then slowly come up. And my chair moved. You shouldn't have come around to the, the other side of the chair. We always do we're on one side onto the other side. So we're on this side. We're going to raise this left leg now. Hand on the leg. Extend the arm up. up. Try leaning forward forward and extending the leg and the arm, holding onto the chair, and then come back up. You may find one side isn't as balanced as the other. You may find one day you're more balanced than others. It's okay. That makes, makes you human. You're not perfect. Top of the chair with your hand, this leg comes up, arm comes up again. Test out that balance, raising both arms up and breathing. And then come back down and let's come back around to the front of the chair and we're going to sit down with purpose just like we got up so extend your arms out go down twice without sitting down one two and don't be afraid to use your hands if you need to but if you can just sit and use the hand. So let's pause a minute and reflect on where we've been already in such a short time. We've moved our arms, our legs, our shoulders, our back, our neck. We've pressed our abdomen in a number of ways. We've got, you should feel movement in your cells from your fingers to your toes, your back especially and your legs. There's so much more in yoga that can be explored. And that's what it is. It's an exploration. It's, there's no right. There's no wrong. It's your personal exploration of these movements and what they can do for you. So I invite you now to just take a minute and relax and do a slight meditation. So close your eyes, lean back in your chair, and begin to bring your attention 
to your breath. Breathing in the cool air and breathing out slowly. Letting your breath slow down. Letting your heart beat slow down. Relaxing your shoulders. Moving your toes. Letting your legs relax. Begin to feel a sense of lightness as if you're just floating in the chair. If you hear sounds, bring your attention to only the sounds in your room where you are right now. And then bring your attention a little closer to the sound of your own breath. And just breathe. The mystery of breath. We don't know where it comes from. From the first one to the last. Bow your head slightly. Relax your neck. Be grateful for this moment. As your eyelids are softly closed, notice there's still a light beyond your eyelids. That light is referred to the yogis as that eternal light, that beingness, that liveliness, that spark that is in each and every one of us and goes by many names. So as we end our time together, lift your head, open your eyes. Sweep your arms up, look up at your hands, bring them to prayer, folding your thumbs, pressing your thumbs against your heart, bowing your head in gratitude. And we usually look around the room, but today we're looking around virtually and we'll wish each other namaste, which means that light, that divinity within me recognizes and salutes and greets that same light within each and every one of you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, Amy. That was that was wonderful, Rick. You know, I practice some yoga and some other types of physical fitness along with this lifestyle. And I consider myself to be pretty fit, especially for my age. And I was really surprised at how I still felt benefit just by sitting and doing these stretches. And I think that that's a really good thing to, for people to know because we do sit down so much during the day at our computers and other in front of TVs and other devices. And even if we could just take some of the things that you showed us today while we're 
on the internet or, or, you know, watching TV and just kind of doing that spinal stretch or that reaching up because they think that our bodies are always curved over like that, over devices and over keyboards and things. I really felt the benefit and I felt it from my toes to my fingertips. I really sincerely felt a, a difference. And I'm so glad that you shared that with us today because that was just it's something that I'm going to try to be aware of when I'm in front of my computer and TV and other devices that I'm going to try to remember those different moves that you shared with us because they definitely benefit. Yeah, another thing I haven't done, but I usually do in my other classes, especially for what you mentioned, Amy, is we extend each hand and we give ourselves a little pullback on our fingers because we're all susceptible to that carpal tunnel and you just pull back on those fingers. You won't hurt anything. It'll stretch. And then we try to roll our fingers all the way to our wrists and lock them in with our thumb and make a tight fist so that we can keep those joints active and moving. And you can even make a little puppet with your finger if you want. <laughs> and then we shake it out. We do that on both sides. So. It's really good. That I'm glad you talked about that because I try to, you know, especially if I'm sitting watching some video or something, I try to stretch my fingers backwards, but I have not been doing it in the opposite direction. And when I followed along with you and tried to touch my fingertips to my wrist, I really felt that that stretch there. And that's a very good move. And that's just something that we could be while we're waiting for you know, something to load up on our computer or whatever. We could just be doing things like that. that, that those are wonderful tips. I got to tell you, so, Amy, I stole that. I stole that tip. And it's not really a tip, but most of our audience, if they've already been for their first Social Security Medicare checkup, when the doctor does that, I know you'll get there someday, Amy ask you to take your fingers and touch your wrists and they observe and see what kind of mobility have there to check for arthritis that that's a that's very very intuitive and i i really have found for me you know i've been i wasn't as physically active when i was younger because i didn't have access to things and didn't know about there wasn't YouTube or anything that I could follow along. So as I became an adult and in, in later years, I tried to be more active. And I feel like today I'm more flexible and I have more stamina than I did years ago. So I guess my point is, and I guess you'll agree, it's really never too late to start stretching and moving. And if you if you continue on with it, you probably would see benefit and improvement. Do you see that in the case of the people that you work with? Oh, absolutely, Amy. I can tell you nine times out of 10, people will come for a session with me at where I'm working at it. It's not an assisted living. It's an independent living facility. And they say, well, I did yoga years ago when I was in my 20s and 30s. And I thought I'd come back. And you'd be surprised. They say, come afterwards and say, this was so wonderful. And they come every week. Today, I had a 96-year-old lady. And Wednesdays, we do an extended class, a little more uh, challenging. And I actually brought mats. And we get on the floor and do some regular yoga on the floor. Although everything we just did is done when you're standing up also. And she was amazing. And uh, it made her feel so much more confident and strong that she's still able to move. And one of the big things I hear is uh, some people like to take baths. And they miss that when they get a little more stiff and rigid. They're afraid of falling. So part of what we do is show them that you can easily roll to one side and bring yourself up without worry about falling. But that's for another class. 
Right. And when you talked about being on the floor and on the mat, I'm sure that there must be some things, some people aren't yet at that stage where they could get on the floor because I've even had people who were in their 30s say, if I get on the floor, I'm never going to get up. But I'm right. sure that maybe if they were laying in bed, maybe before they got out of bed in the morning, maybe they could do certain things, you know, in bed. Maybe there would be sure. might some, be some poses that they could do. So, yeah, drawing, but those, I think it, drawing those knees up to your chest and pulling them into your chest while you're laying down is really good to get things going in your gut and just stretch your legs. Right. And so people, I, if, I, if you research on the internet, at least for Americans and probably some other countries too that are eating the way that the standard American diet is, and even some people who have gone plant-based have uh, concerns about constipation and digestion. And there's a lot of elements to trying to treat constipation. And of course, if it's chronic, somebody should go and see a physician. But for the most part, of course, drinking a lot of water and, and, and having movement and eating high fiber. But these moves that you're showing us, can you talk about um, I mean, you're not a physician, but can you talk about how yoga helps move things in your digestive system? Because when you see a picture of if somebody ever looked at the digestive system, they would see the the colon and how it just kind of wraps around the body. And it's it's just like a snake. And, and to me, to have it's so amazing that something can go in this end and come out of that end going through that that uh, trail that goes around and loops around in such a tight yeah. uh, space inside of you. And so can you maybe talk a little bit about how yoga may help with that? Yeah, it's actually, I think, miles of intestines. And there's the big intestine and the small intestine. So, um, but you're, you're right. Some of the things you mentioned and I mentioned is in the morning, especially bring your knees into your chest, that kind of thing. Uh, bending over at the waist, uh, many of us don't do that. Or simply crossing those legs like we did and bringing that knee in close. And then we, further on, instead of just going out over the knee, we try to kiss the knee and we squeeze it in. So you're pressing in that colon that was here or that intestine had to move over because you were squeezing it and pressing it and it's all being pushed around in there so it's like a uh, one of those water balloons those big water balloons that are full of water and you can twist it all around and it doesn't break and then when you were straighten it out again and then if you were to break it on one end it would like flow really nice and smooth so I think that's the best thing I can think of as far as yoga and how it benefits you in regular movement in all of your body, especially your digestive system. Right. It's kind of like an internal massage, I guess. And right. Also, in, yeah. And I think that mm -hmm. people who are uh, suffering with constipation, it may be something that makes them anxious and, and tense. And it seems that mm -hmm. incorporating these moves and, and the yoga practice, especially it, when they first wake up, if, if they're trying to um, eliminate after they get out of bed, if they can start off by doing some of these things that you described in their bed and in, while in bed before they get up and just try to get into that with that breathing that you talked about and just that calmness of mind, that, that might be helpful to just kind of get them not to be so tense. Right, and drinking some good cool water and then alternating with some warm, like a tea or something, cool and warm, seems to help everything get awake in the morning. Wow, that's fantastic. That's a, quite, quite a bit of great information. And I just, like I said, after just following along with you, I just felt so much more relaxed and, and so forth. And I love how you show that these moves, as you teach to people even in their 90s, and you have some centurions in your, 
in your class yeah. that it's never too late, even if you've never done any yoga or exercise, it's really never too late to do something. Is that right? Right. Right. And it's not a religion. It's not a, it's just a series of uh, practices. And if you got into yoga more, you'll see that a lot of the names of the postures are names after things that they observed in nature. Uh, you've got the cat, cow, and the sphinx. We didn't do the sphinx today. That's another one that we do. Uh, but all these words are just uh, descriptions of what they do was from them observing nature and how nature responds and uses these movements in different ways. Yeah, cats, animals, horses, eagles. There's an eagle pose. There's a lot of, a lot of different poses that way. And everything that you can do in a yoga class standing up, you can do in a chair or with a chair as a prop. Well, that's good to know because that's that's important. And I I was thinking, and I guess this would be some up to an individual because they would have to decide on their their balance and so forth. But maybe for people who uh, with the constipation after they do some of these stretching and moving and breathing exercises when they're in bed. Maybe since you were showing these thing, movements that we were sitting in a chair, maybe they could consider trying to do some of those movements when they're on a stool, you know, so that maybe sure. that, that can help get things going too, because they could maybe grab mm -hmm. onto the stool and, and do those stretches at work. Right. Or if it's safe, if it's safe for them to, uh, pull up a knee and reach down and try to touch your toes or tie your shoes even if you don't have them on and uh but anytime you get your head below your heart remember to come up slowly because your blood has to readjust but it's so good for you to have your head below your heart it's like an internal flush because the heart won't have a hard time pumping up and it'll go and flush all those old cobwebs out of your brain, and you might have a little bit better concentration, too. Right. And I, I love how you talked about the posture, because so often we're just hunched over, either, you know, mm -hmm. eating or on a device or something, and how you showed us how, how to uh, sit catch up straight yourself. and try to... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I, I, I often throughout the day catch my... <laughs> hunched over and it's and you have to remind yourself to 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 bring your shoulders back and down and and I just right. all those poses were really very beneficial so mm -hmm. I think that uh, is there something you wanted to say no I think it's been great I, I hope we can do more and do do it up more often it'd be great and um, I think if anybody had any questions they can go to your website and uh, I'd be glad to give them any information uh, there's there's some herbs you can use that you can incorporate in your diet also that are very helpful uh, but just a, really a good clean diet with lots of fiber and vegetables and fruits and it's just so beneficial and if you incorporate that with movement like in yoga you're going to feel great all the time <laughs> yep i agree so let's see i think we might have a a question or a comment let's see and Anne wants to know what move leads to being able to kiss the knee so I guess for somebody that can't quite kiss their knee just yet what's the first thing that they could do to get to, to that point well I guess repetition your body will remember okay that you can only go this far or this far and then give yourself a little uh, help and put your fist on your knee and maybe kiss your fist even if that's not available you may never be able to bring it all the way up i was with a lady today i think she's about 85 and she said you know i'm really surprised because i noticed rick when you were doing this that you've got a big line on your knee what she said i've had two knee replacements and I can't do that because it's too tight. I said, I was the same way. 
I've never been in the hospital and perfectly healthy, but my knee was really bad. And about three years ago, I got a new one. And leading up to the, the knee replacement, I continued to do yoga right till the last week. And then afterwards, I did a lot of stretching. And so I would encourage Ann to just don't give up. Kind of keep a measurement. Like I, today I can do this. Tomorrow I can do this. A week from now I can do this. A month from now I can do this. Two months I can do this. Three months maybe I can kiss my knee. Set a goal. Try it. If you fail, so what? <laughs> right. Because even if you never kiss your knee, you're still right. bending forward and you're still moving the internal organs around and compressing yeah. things and so forth and, and giving circulation going. So I think that it's beneficial right. even because some people may have hip problems or knee problems that they can't do right. it. And, but don't let that and discourage you. Yeah. Right. One last thing is don't give up because one of the yogi teachers I talked with many years ago told me a little bit of pressure over a long period of time can move bone. It can move muscle. It can move tendons. But they're so tight. It may just take a little bit of pressure over a long period of time. And they use an example of braces on your teeth. Your teeth are made of bones. What does the doctor do when they want to straighten your teeth? They put braces on. Then they, they tighten the braces. Then you go back a few weeks later and they tighten them some more. So it's a little bit of pressure over a long period of time. And eventually your teeth are straight. Bone that was crooked is now straight. But it took a while with pressure. That's a very good analogy. Oh, Anne said, thank you for your encouragement. Oh, I hope, I hope Anne's going to try this again. You know, this is just not a one-time thing that you're viewing. This right. is something for you to right. keep going back to again and again. And even if you don't make it through the whole exercise, even if you just do one or two of the moves, that could be your beginning right there. And then as each week goes along, maybe you go a little bit longer. And I think that, that right. that's wonderful. Let's see if we have another. Uh, Lynn Davis. Hi, Lynn. Always wanted to learn yoga. Wish I could find a personal yoga teacher that would teach me as I am blind. Mm. Yeah, I've had some blind students and sometimes they bring their dog. <laughs> so, yeah, if you look around, there's probably someone. I don't know what city she's in or where she's at, but she can give you some information uh, offline maybe and get in touch with her you know okay yeah well you can always contact me and and i'll uh send your contact information over to rick and with your questions mm -hmm. and he'll try to research that for you kathy cook hi kathy are we able to see other programs you have are you talking about me or you <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, well i think i think kathy knows that she can see my programs so i think she's asking right me. Well, I would encourage uh, your audience, too, that uh, Mary, my wife Mary, has uh, a couple of things on Zoom every week. It's free. Um, you know, we started doing that, and it would continue, and it's growing more and more. And that is a regular yoga, but there's also one called yin yoga, which is really a nice way to start, too. Uh, yin yoga is on Wednesdays in the evenings. It's very relaxing. And the only, the simple explanation of yin is you only do three or four poses, but you hold them for two to four to five minutes. So you might be lying on your back, letting your knees fall to one side, but then you stay there. And you'd be surprised how that is not the easiest thing to do for us to sit still that long. And a lot of things come up because there you've got that pressure for a longer period of time. And pretty soon you say, I don't want to do this anymore. But it's a very powerful modality, this yin yoga. So uh, they can, we can post it on your site maybe or 
where her Zoom classes are, and maybe we can schedule some more of these with uh, with you and me also, you and I. Yeah, that would be great. And we will, when you give me the links, we will put them in our note, show notes in the below that you can look at on YouTube, and we will get Good. that to everybody. I think we have time for one more question. Yeah, one more. Kathy Richard. Hi, Kathy. That's the beauty of yoga. Whatever you can do, it's working for you. Absolutely. Yeah, she hit it right on the head. It's whatever you can do. I encourage people, the best time to do yoga is in line at Publix <laughs> or in line anywhere, really. You're going to see people standing in line, and I want you to notice them. And don't be one of them that's standing in line. Look around and say, I'm going to stand, and I'm going to roll my shoulders back, and I'm going to stand up straight. And they may come over to you and say, are you feeling okay? Because your soul, your posture is perfect. Tip your hips forward a little bit. You know, stand up straight. And then if you just learn that, you can do a whole lot for yourself in many ways. You're right. So thank you for that. So, so often we're hunched over even when we're standing up. And if we can become, while we're standing in line at a store or so forth, if we can become more aware of that and just, and, and take advantage of those little micro moments in life when you can change right. your posture and your breathing. And, and it, mm -hmm. I think it makes us more aware of and grateful of the things that we, that we have, the fact that we are, you know, able to experience the life around us. It's a, wow. it's a nice thing that we should take a pause and, straighten up and think about it right victoria b said when i follow my yoga dvd they do ohms at the end am i supposed to visualize something what should i be doing is there a correct breathing technique etc so she's talking at the end of the practice at the end of the tape yeah i guess they do that i think yeah i guess so, yeah. that's yeah. the time to just empty your mind empty your mind and let whatever comes in comes in hopefully not very much will come in and you'll just be blank you should walk out a clean slate i mean all the other stuff is going to come back to you i used to say as you lie down on the mat in the beginning let all those busy thoughts of the day the month the year all those things you have to do and think about, let them fall to the back of your mind, behind the door, turn the lock. They'll be there when you're done. And just give your mind a rest. That's the best thing you can do. Yeah, I agree. Especially people who are following this lifestyle, they're so intentional and they're trying to be the best that they can be as far as the way that they eat without including animal mm -hmm. products and trying to stay with whole foods and not to do processed foods. And they're so intentional with that. And that is a very important part. But lifestyle is what I call it. I don't call it a diet because lifestyle means so much more. And part sure. of that lifestyle is, is to be take advantage of uh, whatever you can to get yourself in the best physical condition you can be. And also to take pause and to relax and to empty your mind of things because there's so many things that go through our minds that we're thinking about it, it, we just need a little break from it and i think that this was a wonderful opportunity for all of us to to do that i'm going to be watching this broadcast again so that i can try to remember the different moves that you did so i can try to hold on to that and incorporate them when i'm in my sitting position as i am sometimes too too long periods of time I'm going to try to go over them again. That was just so right. awesome. Um, I think that that was all the questions that we had. And I just wanted to thank you again, Rick. It was so nice of you to take the time out of your day to come and bring the practice to us and to share all those wonderful moves with us and the, and the knowledge and give us hope that there is always room to do a little bit more and even if you don't do everything that other people can do with yoga, even if you're just sitting in a chair, 
that's great. And you just keep on incorporating those things in your lifestyle. Now, everybody, please stay tuned for a special announcement. I'd also like to thank Rebecca from PKA Solves. And she's been in the background helping us with the questions and the camera angles and so forth. And I, oh, hi, Rebecca. And she, I, I bet she was following along with us too, doing her, her breaths. And I also wanted to thank Jess from Jess Toss Voice. She did the countdown and she did the promos. And most of all, I want to thank all of you because we're all here to help each other. That's why I'm here. And I wouldn't be here and neither, neither would Rick if you guys didn't join us. So I'm really glad that you're here. Please like and share and subscribe and share this with as many people as you can because we all need to get back into a, a quieter time sometimes and just to have our lifestyle benefit from things like this. And if you could type in the comments below as I sign off with Rick in a little bit, we're going to be type saying be strong, be well, be green. So you can type that in the comments below. But first, just toss voice. Tell us who's coming up next. Coming up next, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn reversed and cured heart disease for thousands of patients and has advocated for a plant-based diet since 1984. Presently, Dr. Esselstyn directs the Cardiovascular Prevention and Reversal Program at the Cleveland Clinic Wellness Institute. Dr. Esselstyn was featured in the documentary Forks Over Knives. Join us for a Q&A on Wednesday, June 9th, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, on Be Green with Amy, live. Thank you so much, Rick, and thanks, everybody, for joining us. And until we see you again, remember, be strong, be well, and be, be green. green. <laughs> Bye.